Thanks for joining everyone. I think we're going to get started in just another minute or so. Look at everyone's homes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not showing my messy. I've been on meeting since 5 a.m., so you guys don't need to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, we'll be recording this, so um, if you miss anything, if you'd like to follow up, please let me know. And I believe you can everyone see my screen. Yes. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yep. Uh, during the meeting, if you have any questions, it'll be bouncing between speakers, but feel free to drop them in the chat or um, just interrupt whoever's talking and we can answer questions as we go. And of course, if there's any follow up questions, we can answer them afterwards. Um, so I will go ahead and present. And first, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off to Jonathan and Mark to just kick off the meeting, and um, then we'll go ahead and start with the project updates. All right. Um, can you hear me okay, Allison? Yeah. Great. Uh, well, this, this is Mark. Um, like probably all of you, I'm coming to you live from my home. Um, so I just want to say thank you all for, for joining this community meeting. You know, we're we're all kind of dealing with a lot right now, a lot of change, a lot of people out there struggling with, with everything going on. But, um, you know, I believe very strongly in this community. We, we've come together many times in, uh, in when we face faced challenges. And I think, you know, we're in a ch very challenging time right now with community members all over the world that are being, being impacted by what's going on. But I think we uh, are able to work really well together as a community. You know, we have, we're very lucky, I think, in that as open source communities, we have been working together online remotely kind of uh, for, for years, for, for the 10 years of OpenStack. Um, we've, we've, you know, we've worked together uh, remotely all over the, all over the world. And obviously we're, we're in a position now where we're unfortunately not gonna be able to get together in person, all of us in, in June for what we were planning to do for Vancouver. And we'll be talking about the, the, uh, how the event plans are changing and, and Aaron and her team will, will go into that later. But I am really uh, confident that we, we have the right community spirit and the right um, ability to kind of reach out and help each other and all the, all the ways we, we have for 10 years in the OpenStack community and all the other, other communities within um, the OSF now. And so just excited to, to be able to, to help each other whenever we can. And I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it back, back over to Aaron to go through some of the, or I should say Allison, to go through some of the, the updates this morning. So thank you all for joining. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. So this morning, we're going to kick off with the OpenStack Foundation project updates. Um, kick first with OpenStack, and then we'll turn it over to the events team from the OpenStack Foundation. Just give us an update on all the different events that we're planning and how that impacts the broader community. So first, I'm going to hand it over to um, Kendall Nelson for OpenStack. Hello, everyone. So um, as far as project updates go for OpenStack, uh, we're currently developing the Ushuri release. Um, our two main community goals that were selected were um, project specific contributor and PTL documentation and also dropping Py27 support. Um, ich weiß nicht, was du verabredet hast. Ich habe eine Mail von dem bekommen, der Philipp an. Sorry. Oh, I uh, missed all of that. Maybe it was. Accidental yeah, keep, unmuted. Keep going. Okay. okay. Um, so as far as the project specific contributor and PTL documentation goes, we have until the end of the release to continue working on this. Um, the actual details of implementation were decided a little later than we would have liked, but um, there are a number of projects that are already completed and more patches continue to go out day by day. Um, so I'm confident that we can get this accomplished. Basically, the goal is just that um, there are a lot of different 
uh, aspects of how to contribute to a, a number of projects. And there are a lot of common things, but there are also a lot of project specific best practices and that sort of thing. And we wanted to make sure that it was easier for contributors to get involved. Um, and in order to do that, we need those details written down somewhere. So that's what that goal is all about. Um, as for dropping Py 2.7 support, we obviously have been on Python 3 for a while and we don't need to support Py 2.7 anymore. So um, at this point, all of the OpenStack services have dropped Py 2.7 and the like current phase that is um, under development is working on updating all of the Tempest plugins to drop Py 2.7. There are a couple Python clients left that need to drop it and um, at that point, we'll be able to start pushing required changes on the deployment projects. Um, though not all of those need uh, everything implemented and some of them are already done. So uh, this goal should also be completed by the end of the release. Um, this week, we have the final release for non-client libraries. Next week is milestone three and that with that comes feature freeze. So at the, that point, most of the new features that we'll be looking for in the upcoming release will be settled and we will start focusing on testing for the rest of the cycle. Also, we have the cycle highlight deadline next week, so we should be able to start promoting um, the things that'll be uh, new, shiny, fun things with the uh, next release. Um, the last thing, as far as project updates goes, is um, we've been talking uh, internally, at least a little bit, about a like cheers uh, to the release since we won't be able to uh, get together in June to celebrate it. So uh, at some point in the next week or two here, I will send an email to the discuss mailing list to kind of brainstorm and uh, plan that out. Um, the other thing that's currently going on in community updates that I will touch on is the TC and PTL elections. On Tuesday, the nomination period closed and we have um, candidates for all but 16 of the um, projects uh, for uh, PTL. So we have um, 16 projects that we uh, are looking for a different solution, um, whether we decide that they will still have a candidate or maybe be turned into a SIG or um, something like that. If you're interested in that discussion, let me know and I can direct you to that. Um, <laughs> and uh, as for the TC election, we have, I think it's six candidates and we have five seats or seven candidates and five seats. I'd have to double check those numbers. But um, at this point, we're in a campaigning period for the next week. And then next Tuesday is when we'll actually start polling for the election to find out who our new TC members will be. And that is all. Back to you, Allison. Awesome. Yeah. So um, another community update. So we are doing a runs on OpenStack campaign and if you were around in like mid 2016. We kicked this off to just show the versatility of OpenStack and how many different industries it's worked on. Um, so we're reviving this campaign and we definitely want to make it community wide. So um, one of the big pieces to where people can participate is taking the user survey. Um, the TC actually just published a great um, series of findings from the questions that they asked um, in the user survey. So we'll be putting that up on super user soon, but it really helps, you know, bridge that feedback gap between the operators and the developers. So if you or your customers or your internal teams are running OpenStack, please, please take the survey. Um, you'll see many more emails from me about it probably, um, but we definitely appreciate um, you taking the time to do it as it does help um, guide some of the future releases. Um, and with that, we're also trying something new this time where you can submit your case study pretty easily or have your customers do it as well. Um, it's a form stack that's like five or six questions. Um, so it doesn't take too long and it's actually pretty easy to kind of cycle it through approvals that way as well. So if you'd like to submit your case study, please reach out to me um, and we'll also be circulating that link with the recording as well. Um, the next big thing is this is 2020. So it's the 10th anniversary for the OpenStack project. So we have been talking internally about some big ideas to celebrate the community's progress and the project's progress over the last decade. Um, so we will be sharing more information probably in the next week 
on the OpenStack Discuss mailing list on how your company can get involved or how you as an individual can get involved. Um, and last week, I think it was last week, it all kind of blends together now, um, Sunny shared a survey on the mailing list where you can talk about your top 10 favorite things or summit cities or things like that from the last 10 years. So if you've been around the community for a long time or even if you're new, please take the survey. It's really interesting to get everyone's different perspectives and kind of see how OpenStack has shaped their life in the last 10 to last 10 years to maybe just the last year or two. And with that, I will pass it to Matt McEwen for the Airship update. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, Ashley and I wanted to give you a quick status on what we've been up to in Airship. Uh, the first thing is our Airship 2 development, uh, which is where the majority of our new development is happening on our, our, our 2.0 release. Uh, that's going really well. Uh, we are still finishing up our alpha milestone and plan to get that uh, out the door this month. And what our alpha milestone is going to be is going to be a, uh, an end-to-end -end demonstration of the uh, sort of the provisioning workflow of, uh, you know, from soup to nuts, uh, driven remotely uh, by the, the new uh, client for Airship 2. Um, but leaving out, uh, leaving out uh, the workload deployment on top of it as part of that. We've done a lot of good work uh, in parallel on, uh, on the work, uh, workload deployment and, and lifecycle management as well, uh, but that will be um, wrapped up as part of the, the beta release, which will follow. Uh, we also had a meetup a couple of days ago. Uh, it was a PTG style meetup, and it was uh, it logically took took the place of a face to face meetup that we were planning to have uh, at KubeCon, which we did not. Uh, you know the pros and cons of that. It would have been nice to see folks face to face, but we did have uh, some much higher participation uh, since it was a uh, remote meeting. Uh, it was. Full day, really good. Um, it was uh, one, one of the nice things about it is that uh, a focus of Airship 2.0 is to make it smaller and to work with other communities that are uh, that are working on similar things. So uh, many of the folks in the Airship community have have sort of gone and focused on different uh, projects, other projects like uh, Customize and uh, Metal Cubed and Cluster API and things like that. Uh, and getting together for this gave us an opportunity to all kind of catch up on what we've all been working on and what the status of these different projects are. In addition to the uh, kind of the airship uh, proper projects, the airship namespace projects like Airship Cuddle and Armada and the uh, the new Airship UI. So that was uh, that was really good. It also fe uh, featured um, updates from the Airship Working Committee and Technical Committee and a feedback session at the end. So it was really good from a uh, community standpoint as well. <clears throat> uh, next, uh, Airship has added a formal vulnerability management process. This is largely inspired by OpenStack's uh, well, uh, well-oiled vulnerability management process, um, and it uh, has a small group of individuals who receive the uh, security bugs that have been submitted, uh, and then a you know, a process to uh, remediate that and then, uh, and then uh, release that. Uh, we, we were uh, lucky enough to have a, uh, a, a trial run of our vulnerability management process already shortly after it was introduced. It turned out to be a false alarm, so that was good, but it helped us, uh, you know, make sure that in, a, uh, in that false alarm context, uh, all the gears were turning. Uh, and then that's also a good segue uh, because we've integrated that into our GitHub issues uh, that we've been focusing on recently. Uh, we've adopted GitHub issues uh, for our um, our sort of story tracking uh, type things. And uh, this was largely driven by the fact that, uh, like I mentioned, we're collaborating uh, with a lot of um, and driving work and, and contributing to a lot of uh, other projects, most of which also use GitHub issues. Uh, so keeping our scope in GitHub issues allows us to cross-reference those really easily. Um, sort of that coupled with the fact that no one in the Airship uh, community in hindsight uh, really fell in love with JIRA. Um, so this, does, this doesn't change our uh, 
you know, where, where does our source code live and how do we do our, um, you know, our Garrett workflow uh, one bit, except that we are, um, we've introduced uh, GitHub issues, uh, uh, commit tags into our commit messages, and then those uh, feed off of the, uh, the GitHub mirror that we have of our open dev uh, repositories. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it off to Ashley. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, so those are kind of the Airship project updates, and I wanted to um, just give a couple of notes around um, some major community updates um, on the Airship side. Um, so Airship um, has its own um, Slack workspace now, uh, which is exciting. Um, it mirrors to um, the same IRC channel that we've been using um, at uh, Freenode at Airship It. Um, so it's the same content. You can just use whichever platform you prefer now. Um, it makes um, working across communities a little bit easier for some people. Um, so you can join that at airshipit.org slash slack. Um, and then we also have a user survey coming soon. Um, so some of you all might be familiar with the OpenStack user survey, um, and this will be very similar. Um, we are currently brainstorming some ideas for specific questions that, um, the Airship community and the developers are interested in asking um, users as well as um, potential users. So um, look for that, that will be going around on the mailing list. Um, we're basically looking for feedback in an etherpad at this point, um, and then we'll be passing around sort of um, an alpha of the user survey uh, soon. And with that, I'll give it back to Allison. Awesome. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Matt. Um, next, we're going to go to Kata Containers, and I'll pass it to Sunny. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. Um, hi, everyone. This is Sunny from the foundation. Um, so for the Kata Containers uh, recent update, the community has just released the latest stable 1.9.6 and 1.10.2 releases. And the community just um, created 2.0 dev branches in uh, Kata Containers CI and test repos as a basis of running Kata 2.0 feature development. And the development cycle will, um, the 2.0 development cycle will happen along the side with the next 1.12.0 um, release. And Kata Containers 2.0 release um, involves some huge changes like repository consolidation, agent simpl simplification, image pooling inside sandbox, and so on. So the community has been discussing and working on how to um, plan things out on those. And um, I also include a link at the um, bottom bullet point. I will also send in the chat in a, in a little bit. All the 2.0 features are tracked by the GitHub project. And um, you can find that in there. And um, for the community update, um, last but not least, uh, if you are using Kata containers, uh, please take the Kata user survey and provide anonymous feedback to the community. And that's it. I'll hand back to Allison. Thanks, Sunny. Um, next is Starling X from Ildico. Hi, uh, it's Ildico, also from the foundation. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. And apologies, I don't have my video on. Cameras freak me out. So, you know, I'm um, isolating. So, um, as for the uh, Starling X update, um, for those of you who are a little less familiar with the project, it, it's a fully integrated open source platform optimized for edge and IoT use cases. The latest stable release is 3.0 and the community is being very actively working on the 4.0 release. Uh, the planned uh, or target release date is uh, during the second half of June. Um, currently, we have the Milestone 2 deadline happening this week. Um, there are a couple of things that, that are already uh, merged. Um, so things like Kata Container Support, for example, is already um, available in Starting X and will come out with the 4.0 release. Um, the community is very actively focusing on items like stability and manageability, security type of, uh, type of items, and also looking into uh, improving and increasing test coverage uh, on all levels. So not just unit and um, functional testing, but looking into um, sanity, robustness uh, testing as well. And uh, hopefully in the future, we we will be able to do uh, some performance testing as well. 
Um, as for the uh, larger ongoing work items for the uh, 4.0 release, um, the upgrade support when it comes to upgrading from 3.0 to 4.0 uh, is something that the community is uh, actively working on to uh, finalize, uh, especially with edge environments. It's really important uh, to be able to go through smooth upgrades for, uh, for the platform. Um, so it's a high priority item for the community. Um, there are also uh, some, let's say, more exotic uh, feature development activities ongoing, like increasing FPGA um, support and adding some enhancements to, to the project, um, or um, looking into uh, security related items like uh, certificate management. Um, so they are looking into uh, further support and enhancements in that area as well. Um, this project also has a user survey. Uh, we just have this trend ongoing right now. So the community would be really eager to learn from um, either of you, or if you know anyone who is uh, testing, evaluating the project, uh, please look into the user survey. It's a really short one. Uh, we really just would like to get an idea of what, what uh, people are doing with the project, or if anyone needs help, you can also mark that in the user survey. And uh, I will reach out to you and uh, see how, can, how I can help you getting started with either testing activities or getting involved in the community. Um, and I believe that's all um, for starting X. So back to Allison. Thanks, Silico. All right, and last but not least is Zool. So I think I'm passing this off to Clark. Yes. Um, so hello. Morning. Uh, I'm Clark. I'm one of the Zool maintainers. I also happen to be a foundation staff member. Um, so quite a bit has happened with Zool since the last time you've had a, an update from us. Uh, one of the first things you might notice is that we've reorganized the documentation, how it's laid out and organized, so that it's easier for you to find what you need. Um, specifically, we've created tutorials, how-to guides, and then more in-depth reference documents as well as higher level explanation docs. And the idea there is, you know, if, if you know you, you wanna set up a Zool, you go straight to the how-to guide. If you're trying to find some specific behavior in, in your Zool system, you go to the reference and so on. So the idea is to make it more approachable and, and kind of get right to what you need rather than needing to figure out the, the organization system that was there before. Um, on top of that, we've done a lot of work around integrating with other systems, and that's kind of been the, the bulk of the, the rest of what you'll see here. Um, on the Ansible side, uh, if you're not familiar with, with how Zool executes its uh, test jobs, it uses Ansible as an execution engine. And that means we integrate very tightly with Ansible. Uh, and what we've tried to do there is kind of follow and trail Ansible's release and support cycle. Uh, so as part of that, we've dropped support for Ansible 2.5, which was end of life by Ansible, I believe, in the middle of last year. Uh, but we've added support for Ansible 2.9, and we'll continue adding support for new releases of Ansible as they come out and we'll drop off older releases kind of in a trailing fashion. Um, the node pool utility, which is part of the, the Zool project, manages test resources, and we've added Google Cloud uh, support to that system. That means you can run jobs inside a Google Cloud account now using uh, Zool and node pool. We've also added support for GitHub's checks feature. So if you're a GitHub user using Zool for CI, it, in the past, we would leave comments that look like uh, typical normal users, but with the checks feature, what we get is kind of direct integration into the GitHub UI for CI results. Uh, so it, it looks cleaner and it's a little bit user friendly, especially if you're using other CI systems that are integrating in that way, you get all of your stuff in one place. Um, and then we've also added some basic GitLab integration. Uh, this is kind of early days. Uh, so what we're asking is that if, if you are interested in Zool and a GitLab user, definitely try it out, give us feedback, help us fix bugs. Um, many of the, the existing Zool maintainers are not GitLab users today. So this is a new project from us or a new tool for us. And we're relying on, on the community to kind of help us build out this feature to make it as, as uh, useful as possible. And I think it is now Jimmy's turn to talk about uh, some community updates. Hi, yes, um, like everybody else, we've got a user survey. Uh, so uh, we're tracking, um, we've got some pretty good Zool users in so far. 
But if you know anyone that is running Zool, please uh, direct them towards the user survey. I'm putting the link in the chat. So uh, thank you. Awesome. So before we move on to events, we had um, some other updates from the community. Um, so the bare metal SIG is working on a white paper um, as well as some ironic use cases. I think we have a new use case going up early next week on super user from Red Hat and there's already a variety of them from both users and ecosystem companies um, that we published in the last year. Um, so if you're running ironic, please share your case study. I will drop the link in the chat once I can access the chat. Um, and Julia, I talked to Julia yesterday, and so she's been posting updates on the OpenStack Discuss mailing list, as well as some meetings to get together and try and finish it, um, since there's not anyone that's 100% working on it right now. So if you want to get involved, or if you just want to be updated on the status of the white paper, stay tuned on the OpenStack Discuss mailing list. I believe she's using bare metal SIG and Ironic as the tags. Um, and then for the edge computing white paper, I'll pass it to Ildiko. Thanks. Um, so just briefly, um, there's a foundation level working group dealing with um, edge computing uh, related topics. We call it OSF edge computing group. Uh, the group um, already published a white paper, um, I think about two years ago, um, to basically set the base tone of what we are working on and just defining some terms that we are using uh, when it comes to talking, um, talking about edge computing related items and uh, infrastructure and uh, platform type of services. So a um, couple of the working group members are working on a second white paper now where we will focus on a few use cases in greater details and the reference architecture work that the group has been um, doing. And uh, we will also highlight some testing related aspects. Um, Many of these items are also uh, work items that the group uh, participants are actively working on. So if you're interested in participating in any of these discussions, then uh, please look up um, all the forums on the uh, working group wiki. Uh, we have IRC channel weekly calls and the mailing list where you can uh, get involved and reach out to the group. I'm hoping that we will be able to have the white paper out soon so you can um, also read uh, what I just talked about. Back to Allison, thanks. Awesome, and the last piece is we wanted to cover some of the cross-project marketing updates that we have been initiating over the last couple of weeks. So first I'll pass to Jimmy for our SEO process update. So one of the things we're trying to do is uh, raise the profile of, of all of our top level projects. Um, and, and so part of that is simply being able to find it on search engines. Uh, so we've already started reaching out to each community uh, with a kind of general plan, and we're working with a, an SEO company uh, to help us identify keywords and, and other um, search targets. And I'll be sharing those goals with the community and then uh, providing results of, of the work as the year goes on. Thanks, back to you, Allison. Cool. Um, and then I sent out an email to all the different mailing lists last week, but basically we really want to make sure that all the communities and projects know that the blogs and super user are your channels as much as anything. So if you have ideas or even just project updates that you think would be a good fit for a project blog or super user, please reach out. Um, we definitely want them to be representative of the community and project progress. And that is very much what you all are doing and we want to hear more. So um, please reach out to any of these or to me directly if you have ideas or if you want to see if something is a good fit. Um, I think that it would really benefit to hear from more, more voices from the community on these different platforms so that newcomers can come in and kind of know where to go for information and who's working on the project. Um, and the last piece is kind of connected to what Jimmy is doing. So we're going to be doing advertising campaigns to leverage some of that content that we're getting from the community um, based on some of the findings from the SEO work that he is doing. So um, especially with findings from the user survey as well as the articles that we'll be generating, um, I think there's gonna be a lot more opportunity to create increased visibility for all of the different projects. Um, and before we move on to events, I know we just covered a lot across a lot of different projects and the chat has been really active, but I wanted to open up to see if anyone had questions 
for anyone who's presented or overall project progress questions before we jump into OSF events. Um, Prakash here, can you hear me? Yeah. I have uh, two items. One, I would like to uh, definitely thank Matt for uh, carrying forward the airship uh, to close to beta uh, alpha. So we, uh, Matt, I would like to know if we can get the alpha release by end of April. Is that a possibility? Sorry, could you repeat that, Prakash? Uh, could you, can you hear me? Properly, can you hear me? Yes. I was asked, I was congratulating Airship Matt for doing a good job and wanted to check if we can get the alpha release of Airship 2.0 by April end. You said by April 8th? Ap no, no, April end. April's, April's end. Um, so Matt, Matt dropped, but um, oh, Matt dropped that. Okay. The, the most recent thing that I have talked to him about is that um, their goal is in the next two to three weeks, um, pretty much as soon as possible, but they don't have a specific set deadline. But I, I would probably expect it, yes, by the end of April. Yeah, no, uh, I, I'm attending that. We had some 10 to 12 uh, items to clear to do. So if you needed any resources, that's what I was trying to figure out to make sure that we close alpha early because then beta will take another six months. So to ensure that we meet November deadline for uh, OpenStack, that was the target I was trying to achieve. Okay, I'll talk to uh, him separately. Okay, great. The second topic, of course, all of these I heard good ones. Even Zool one, I was impressed, uh, especially node pool stuff. Uh, but I, I look at it at a different time because I didn't follow up as I was doing parallel tasking with uh, the TC. So what I want to bring to here is one link, let me put in, and this is related to interoperability. And uh, interoperability working group has uh, not met for whatever reasons. I want to revive it. So that's something uh, is on my mind as I speak here. And there is a link here. We have approved up to, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, if I go to the link I can share, which I have shared, it shows that we have approvals for up to releases uh, queen, and but no implementation. So implementation, the last one I see is only Okata. So, if we do right now uh, training train release, if we can approve by, of course, uh, going through a meeting, set of meetings, deciding what set of uh, APIs to include or exclude, and that should give us approximately time frame to test it. It's already under test in the revstack.openstack.org. And as of February 20, I think Red Hat has tested something. So my question to all of you is, are there, uh, are there vendors, are there uh, RFPs which want to uh, promote the logo, which is called as the uh, OpenStack powered? And there are three of them. One relates to the compute, one relates to the storage, one relates to the platform. So are there any asks from service providers to put a stamp of RF in the RFP saying that if you have something OpenStack uh, driven so that we can go to the branding and who are all interested in this. That's something I wanted to conduct. Yeah. Maybe I'll talk to Ashley to get that moving. We want to get a survey for that. So, to kind of just talk from an OpenStack uh, perspective as someone who sits on the TC, I think that's a good idea. I think we should drive that forward. So um, I think what I can do is I can uh, reach out to you um, and we can start that discussion um, in order to help uh, figure out the approval of more RevStack um, uh, things uh, so that we can pass that over to the foundation staff so they can do the marketing. So I can I can do that as an item with you, uh, Prakash, if you'd like. Uh, who is that? I, I did. This is Mohammed speaking with you. Uh, who? who? Mohammed. 
Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad. Yes. Welcome. Yes. So, so okay. yeah, we can Martin. we can take that as an action item to to work on that uh, together, okay. Thank uh, you. and I can help you drive that. I appreciate that. So, without spending more time, there are there are past reviews I have gone through the summits from uh, Boston to uh, Aust uh, to the Sydney's and which I have missed previously. And uh, what I have is there is a lot of scope in it, but uh, the first thing is we have to make sure that we are up to date by release T. If we can clear the release T, then we can talk about future. Because otherwise it makes no sense. We are fighting the fire right now. Just to get T is the first priority. Yeah, well, that's perfect. I, I agree with you. And, and I think that that's something that's initiative that we should move forward with. And okay. I'm happy to reach out to you um, sure. to, to drive. Oh, I appreciate it. I think we will talk offline, but uh, that is where we need to get a meeting. And Ashley, you can uh, help us out on uh, uh, bridges and whatever you need to uh, get us uh, Thank you. Done for Ashley. Appreciate you. Awesome. Thanks, Mohammed. Thanks, Prakash. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it to Aaron from the foundation to kick off the OSF events update. Yeah. Thanks, Allison. Hi, I'm Aaron Disney. I run events for the foundation. Um, it's definitely been an interesting time the last few weeks um, from an events perspective. Um, like Mark mentioned, we announced a couple weeks ago that we are no longer going to physically host the Vancouver PTG and Open Dev as originally scheduled for June. Um, since that announcement, we, the team and I have been really focused on collecting feedback from various groups within the community, just trying to make sure that we uh, are thinking through all of the impacts that this, that this has and then gathering best practices from groups that have been doing virtual mid cycles and meetings, um, kind of taking those learnings and working them all together to help ensure that we have a successful transition into this virtual gathering um, and still meet all of our collective goals. And the girls are gonna go, Kendall and Ashley will go through um, both PTG and Open Dev specifically here in a second. Um, but I just wanted to thank everyone who has already provided feedback and weighed in on the mailing list, um, shared ideas, and then also joined the planning committees. If you haven't had a chance and you're interested, um, there's definitely still ways to get involved. Um, but thank you to everyone that has helped so far. Um, there's a lot to do, and um, we do have a couple months to get it done, but um, and we're thankful that we've been able to have that time compared to some of the other groups that have had to turn around virtual events in a matter of days or weeks. So um, that's definitely worked out in our favor, and I think the, I think the best practices gathering is going to help us out a lot in the long run. So anyway, thank you for everyone's flexibility and creativity as we figure this out, um, and I will pass it off to, I think Kendall is going first with PTG. Yes, thanks, Erin. Hi, uh, this is Kendall Waters here. I help plan the uh, PTGs with Kendall Nelson and Turi and Erin and Ashley and everyone on the events team. Um, so we are right now figuring out how we're going to make this virtual. Um, like Erin said, this is definitely something that's new, but we do have a lot of people in the community have, who have successfully done these virtual mid-cycles and other meetups. So we are actually using the community to brainstorm best practices um, to uh, make this successful and um, also just revisiting the goal of the event and key challenges that we are going to see. Uh, we had our first meeting this morning which went really well. Um, we had a few people join and then we have two more of these community brainstorms. Um, we'll have April 6th, 17 UTC and then also April 7th at 2 UTC. Um, if you can join, that would be great. Um, if you are wanting to be a part of this brainstorm to make sure it's successful, if you have any questions, feel free to email myself or ptg at openstack.org. And back to you, Erin. I think Ashley is up with Open Dev. We can also share, we've got an ether pad where some of those best practices are going. Um, I can throw that in here too. So oh yeah, that would be great. Yeah, so people can follow along even if you aren't able to join the meetings and, and add ideas. So um, Ashley, if you want to cover Open Dev. Yeah, um, hello, this is Ashley again. So, um, so similar to past open dev events, um, I don't know if all of you are familiar with it, but um, in the past, our goal with these events has been to um, really identify the questions within um, the tracks that we focus on um, that we don't have answers for yet and use kind of the time of the event to dive in and determine kind of the work ahead of us, um, working together, sharing use cases, um, and learning from each other that um, 
you know, my people that might be asking the same questions. Um, so open dev is a little bit different than um, the summit style that most of you have been used to. Um, you know, it's much more discussion based rather than being presentation heavy. Um, so kind of as we move forward, we um, have gathered some um, feedback from, um, you know, experience um, and advice from the programming committees from each of the tracks that we had been focusing on. Um, and we've made a couple decisions that will give us something to build on, um, as well as, you know, give you all an update um, on the planning process um, and progress as we, you know, try to decide what, you know, the most effective format is um, that'll be the most beneficial for the whole community. Um, so with that, kind of the three big um, building blocks that we have at this point are that open dev will happen um, virtually um, and after the virtual PTG. Um, you know, like I said, the exact format and timing is to, uh, to be decided, but um, it will happen after the PTG. Um, and there will not be um, simultaneous parallel or competing tracks. Um, and we think that that will be really beneficial because then you know, the community will be able to dive into each of these topics um, and not have to worry about, um, you know, jumping between, um, you know, during the day, like at an in-person event um, and have the opportunity to participate in more than one. Um, and then the three tracks that we're going to do um, are hardware automation, um, large scale usage of open infrastructure software and containers in production. Um, and each of those will take place on a different date. Um, again, still to be decided. Um, so, uh, you know, as we continue this process, we would love to hear from you all because, you know, this event is for you after all. Um, so there's an etherpad at the bottom. Um, I will drop it in the chat, but we um, have put a couple questions um, into topics that we are interested in gathering feedback from you all, um, you know, just based on your experience at other virtual events happening. Um, feel free to drop your thoughts in there. Um, we would love to hear from you. So at this point, I'll kind of... Um, you know, open it up and see if anybody has any immediate thoughts or comments. Yeah, on either open dev or PTG, um, if anyone has any comments on those specific events. Yeah, and I will drop the, um, the planning etherpad in the chat right now. I do have a comment. Can you hear me? Pratash here? Yeah. 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 So the three tracks which are there, uh, can we have a etherpad links to those so that uh, whatever hardware automation containers in production, all those uh, three uh, can define something there or at least? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, um, we have an etherpad that I sent out a while ago, but that you're right, that's a great idea. Um, I will recirculate that etherpad um, that kind of has um, so if you can add to existing etherpad right now, which is here planning, the link to the three items there itself, then it will be easy, right? Rather than yes. having additional links. Yes, I can, I can combine all of those. Yeah. If you do that, then the, the, the other thing will be who are leading, because there was some survey question previously, who wants to lead what, and people had applied for it. And uh, if it is... Uh, okay for those people who had applied to lead those fronts to be able to uh, manage them? Yeah, so um, I think Prakash is talking about the, um, so we had an application process where people could either apply to be on the programming committee um, or to be a moderator of a discussion um, or a um, or volunteer, um, just a discussion topic that maybe they were interested in hearing about um, or hearing other people discuss. Um, so yes, so um, Prakash, I know that you applied as a moderator um, and we would love to have you um, participate in that. Um, so I think that there will definitely be areas for moderators to participate going forward. Um, I think right now we're concentrating on the form factor, um, but yes, we will definitely be looping in um, those volunteers going forward. Yeah, because content is uh, important uh, and the order in which it is done and how we can maximize the availability of pe people across the globe. It's a bit of a challenge, I understand. So definitely uh, fixing the format is first and bringing the content is second. I agree with you. Let's move one step at a time, at least get one uh, per week something achieved because it's very difficult in this uh, challenging climate to be able to drive and get the results 
that's the key. Yes, very. <laughs> I agree. Awesome. So for the second half of the year, um, we have the Open Infrastructure Summit in PTG in October, currently scheduled for October 18th through or 19th through the 23rd in Berlin. Um, we're continuing to evaluate the best way to host the event and are thinking through multiple options and approaches. Um, thankfully, we have plenty of time on this one to figure it out. Um, but as always, we want to hear feedback and thoughts um, from all of you to help us make it successful. Um, so yeah, um, that is our, our year of events. Um, does anyone have any additional comments, questions? And if you think of stuff later on, feel free to reach out um, our shared email address. Um, you can reach us at summit at openstack.org um, or also feel free to reach out to me directly, um, Aaron with an E at openstack.org. So awesome, thanks. Awesome. So um i know we covered a lot of things this morning um or evening wherever you may be based um so i wanted to share how you can get involved with all of these different areas um and i know there have been a lot of links shared in the chat um but i will share those on the mailing list afterwards in case you may have missed one or two um but if you have content please share it um we have a lot of different channels happy to discuss some brainstorms if people have some ideas out there um like aaron ashley and kendall said please join the virtual event planning groups um, we can't do this without y'all and we want to make this as successful as possible as we go through this shift um, and get involved in the 10 years of OpenStack campaign. Um, I put Sunny's email in here. So um, she's been running point on this and gathering a lot of awesome testimonials. So please share your experience and um, let us know how you're celebrating 10 years of OpenStack. Um, and with that, I want to pass it to Jonathan Price to, um, to share his thoughts at the end. Well, I was just going to say, um, and, and I'm kind of echoing some of the comments that I see in the chat, which is thanks to everyone for, uh, for joining the meeting and especially to the presenters. And also, um, thank you to Allison for, for organizing this and, and kicking it off. We used to do uh, these kind of community meetings more regularly and, and uh, just sort of fell by the wayside a little bit <laughs> over, the, over the years as we took on um, more events and, and more activities in other areas. And I think that, um, you know, kind of with the, uh, the, the situation that, that we're all in as a global community today, um, it's, it's great to, to revive these community meetings um, and, and, you know, hear feedback. So thanks, Allison, for, for doing that. It's a great time to, to, to get everybody together. And, um, you know, the OpenStack Foundation, we exist to, uh, to serve the community and we're here for all of you. So um, you should always feel free to reach out to, to any of us, um, give us your feedback, give us input, let us know if there are things that we can be helping with on any of the projects. <clears throat> and, uh, and, you know, we, uh, we wanna make sure that we're available to support, uh, support you and, and make sure that, um, you know, we, we continue to have a, a strong and healthy and active community. So thanks everyone for, for participating today. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.